In this video, I'm going to show you how you can completely customize your control bar here in Logic Pro for iPad. Let's go. The control bar here in Logic Pro is super handy. It's got your transport controls. It's got all these display options and different modes you can enable, but you can also completely customize it and make it your own. So to do that here in the top, we tap on the options and go to customize control bar. From here, you can change your transport, your display and your modes. We're going to go through what all of these mean. And at the end, I'm going to give you my recommendations settings for Logic Pro. First up, transport control. So here we can add in rewind and fast forward, which will be added to the left-hand side here, as well as the capture recording button that goes here next to your record button. So what do these do and do you want them? Well, your fast forward goes forward by one bar as you tap there, and not surprisingly, rewind goes back one bar. The capture recording button is a MIDI recording function that will actually capture your MIDI without actually recording your track. If you want to learn more about that, I've got a link to the Logic Pro for iPad that manual because it's a bit more of a complex thing than what we're going to cover in this video. Let's go back to the customize control bar and select the display. So here we can change a few things. Now by default, the position here is going to be on time. So you're going to see the time there. You can change this to beats if you prefer to see your bar and your beats there, or you can go with my preference, which is to have both beats and time there. Next up, we have tempo. So you can turn that off and on, and this is your tempo display here. I find it handy to have on. The same same with your time and your key signature. You can turn that off or on there and you'll see your key signature and time signature. Next up is MIDI. So if you're using a lot of MIDI gear and you want to see your MIDI ins and outs to make sure your MIDI gear is working, you can turn that one on. And finally, your CPU or memory. So with that enabled, it's actually going to show you how much memory and CPU power you're using, which is handy if you're using a bunch of plugins, you've got a lot of tracks, you can see if your iPad is handling processing all of that audio. Let's look at our third set of option here, the mode. So again, we're going to tap on the top right, go to customize control bar and tap on modes. Here we can turn on sync. Now this is the little link button and light that you see there. This is the things like Ableton link. If you use it, you know it. If you don't, you can probably ignore it. But if you want to learn more about it, then you can check out the manual I've got linked down in the description. Replace mode. This is a handy one for some folks. It, with the replace mode turned on, instead of creating multiple takes in a take folder when you're recording, it'll actually overwrite your previous takes. So if you want to treat Logic Pro more like a tape recorder, then the multi-takes feature that you get in here by default, have your replace mode on. If not, just leave it off. Next up, we have low latency monitoring. Now with this turned on and enabled, this is actually going to reduce the amount of latency you hear. What's latency? It's that lag, that delay between when you're playing or singing and when you're hearing that come back into your monitor speakers or your headphones. So if you're finding that there's a lot of latency, turning on low latency monitoring can help while you're recording. Next up, one of my personal favorites as a guitar player is the tuner. So with this one turned on and enabled, if we go to a track that is an audio track, we could actually tap that one and it's going to bring up a chromatic tuner. So if you've got your guitars, your basses, your violins, your ukuleles, you can tune them right here in Logic Pro without having to use any external apps. Next up is the count in. So with this one disabled, it goes away, but there's your count in. So you can quickly turn on and off that one, two, three, four before you record. You've got your metronome click here. So with that turned off, you won't see the metronome with it there. You can instantly turn your metronome on and off while you're recording as well. And finally, you've got the redo and the help. So redo is off by default, but when you turn that on up here next to your undo button, you'll see that there's also a redo button as well, which can be super handy. You can also just hold down on the undo button and the redo will pop up if you want to use it that way. And finally, if you're bugged by that question mark, if you don't want Logic Pro questioning your abilities in Logic Pro, you can turn it off. Now, what you choose to have or not have on your control bar is entirely up to you. But if you'd like some advice based on my experience, here's what I do. I don't have the rewind or the fast forward or the capture recording on, but I do have the cycle option there. Under display here, I have beats and time. I find having them both there useful. And I have tempo, time and key signature and the CPU memory, but not the MIDI option there. And under modes, I don't have that sync, replace or low latency monitoring, but I do add the tuner because I find that super handy. And I put the redo button on there just for good measure. So I hope you found this useful and interesting and you can set up your control bar exactly how you like. If you'd like more tips, tricks and tutorials all about Logic Pro for iPad, check out the link in the description below and I'll see you next time.